Welcome back, folks. Do you ever find yourself chuckling over those what were they thinking moments in product naming? Today, we're examining products that might have excelled on the shelf if not for their, let's say, unique names. Consider Minipoo, a name that flushed its market potential down the drain, or the Bone Phone, making you wonder if skeletons needed their own hotline. Ready for a laugh? Roll the tape. In the swinging 60s, Mini Poo emerged, redefining hair freshness without a drop of water. Though pioneering as the first dry shampoo, its name, born from a playful twist on minimal shampooing, quickly became the butt of jokes, making it the number one topic in awkward product names. Its launch stirred quite the commotion, promising clean hair anytime, anywhere. Yet, as competitors with less bathroom humor names appeared, Mini Poo's spotlight dimmed, becoming a quirky relic of past convenience. 1979 unveiled Jockey's Microbriefs, revolutionizing men's comfort with a three-panel design. However, the name sparked unintended snickers, suggesting a micro-fit that many feared would leave little to the imagination. The name, intended to highlight its compact yet powerful support, became a lesson in suggestive branding, leading to chuckles in the aisles. Despite its innovative snugness, the briefs remained a niche memory, overshadowed by less eyebrow-raising alternatives, a snug whisper in the history of undergarments. AIDS, the diet candy of the 70s, promised weight loss bliss. Ironically named long before the AIDS crisis, its tagline, Lose Weight Deliciously with AIDS, soon became a marketing nightmare. The unfortunate phonetic match led to a dramatic sales drop as the epidemic rose. Attempts to rebrand couldn't shake the association, turning a once popular brand into a case study on the importance of names, marking a sweet idea with a bitter end. In 1957, Spud Cigarettes attempted to carve a niche with a name inspired by potatoes, betting on the veggie for a unique selling point. The idea? To offer a fresh alternative in tobacco. However, consumers found the concept of smoking a Spud less than appetizing. Competing against brands with more smokable names, Spud's flame quickly fizzled out, leaving it as a curious puff in the history of tobacco marketing a reminder that not all innovations are digestible. Meds Tampons entered the scene with a name that exuded clinical assurance. Launched with the promise of doctor-approved comfort, the brand aimed to merge hygiene with healthcare. However, the sterile connotation didn't sit well with consumers looking for comfort in those delicate moments. The name's medical vibe turned personal care into a cold procedure leading to its quiet disappearance. Meds became a lesson in the fine line between trust and personal touch in naming. Cracks Crackers, bursting onto the snack scene, hoped its onomatopoeic name would resonate as the sound of irresistible crunchiness. Despite the ambition, its name evoked more amusement than appetite, overshadowing the product's quality. Launched with the slogan, Crack open a cracks for maximum snacks, it struggled against competitors who offered a more wholesome image. Eventually, cracks crumbled into obscurity, a crunchy tale of ambition that didn't quite taste as expected. Soylax Cleaner hit the shelves in the 50s, its name a bold promise to annihilate dirt, marketed with dirt's worst enemy. As its battle cry, the product's name ironically mirrored the very mess it aimed to clean. Consumers were baffled, preferring brands that didn't sound like the problem itself. As cleaner names arrived, Soylax was swept into the dustbin of history, a dusty example of when literal naming backfires, leaving behind a clean slate. In 1966, Cholesterol promised to nourish hair with a name unfortunately reminiscent of cholesterol, confusing consumers about its benefits. Despite its intent to signify richness and depth for hair care, the health-conscious public hesitated, wary of the implications. The beauty world's shift towards lighter, natural names led to cholesterol's decline, turning a potentially rich legacy into a greasy memory, a slip in the market's shower of products. Big Yank Leisure Wear, 
launched with the promise of rugged durability, found its muscular name flexing more humor than fashion. Aiming to dress the modern man in unbreakable fabric, it instead dressed conversations in laughter. As fashion trends leaned towards subtler elegance, Big Yank's machismo became an oversized misfit in the wardrobe of time, a reminder that in the fashion world, sometimes less is more and softer can be stronger. Thumbs up. Jeans by Sears in 1983 aimed to capture the youth with a gesture of universal approval. Marketed with Say Yes to Style, it hoped to weave positivity into denim. However, its cheerful name clashed with a generation seeking edgier symbols of identity, making it a fashion misstep. As the denim narrative evolved, thumbs up faded, a lesson that in the quest for cool, some thumbs are bound to point down, weaving itself into the fabric of bygone trends. In the toothbrush tussle of the early 20th century, pro tick aimed to brush away competition with a name oozing medical prowess. Launched with the promise of preventing dental dilemmas, its name, inspired by its preventive care ethos, ironically left customers more puzzled than persuaded. Despite pioneering in plaque prevention, the toothbrush's cold clinical name couldn't charm the masses yearning for warmth in their morning routine, leading it to be brushed off the shelves, a bristly relic of dental ambition. Quest Feminine Deodorant set sail in the personal care sea with a name that promised an epic journey to freshness. Introduced with the tagline, Embark on a Quest for Confidence, its adventurous name ventured too deep into the realms of fantasy, overshadowing its practical purpose. Launched when consumers craved straightforward benefits over tales of odyssey, Quest's narrative drifted too far from shore eventually sinking into the depths of forgotten products. A whispered legend in the Isle of Personal Care. Android medication stepped into the sensitive arena of impotence treatment in 1980, banking on a futuristic name to signal a new era in medical breakthroughs. Its tagline, the future of men's health, hoped to appeal to tech-savvy consumers. Young and Free, in 1970, splashed onto the beauty scene with a name that promised eternal youth and liberation. With slogans like, Unlock Your Youth, Unleash Your Freedom, it aimed to bottle the fountain of youth for the modern teen. However, as societal shifts celebrated authenticity over aspiration, its prescriptive name aged poorly fading into the background as narratives championing natural beauty and individuality rose, leaving young and free as a footnote in the evolving beauty lexicon. Wonder Sauna Hot Pants, the 70s fitness fad, promised sweat-soaked slimming in style. Its launch campaign, Sweated Out in Style, couldn't save it from becoming a hot topic for the wrong reasons. The combination of sauna and hot pants suggested more of a fashion faux pas than a fitness revolution, leading it to be remembered more for its audacity than efficacy. As wellness trends leaned towards authenticity, these pants lost their steam, a sweaty memory in the closet of fitness fads. Suspense underwear entered the intimate apparel arena with a name designed to intrigue and promise unparalleled support. Marketed with Suspend Your Disbelief in Comfort, it aimed to weave a mystery around support and style. However, its cryptic allure left consumers confused, overshadowed by brands that championed clear comfort and chic design. As the lingerie landscape matured, Suspense's enigmatic charm faded, slipping into the shadows of fashion's past, a whisper of what could have been. Church Jewel's toilet seats aspired to sanctify the loo with lavatory luxury, branding itself as the throne's crowning glory. Introduced with Elevate Your Bathroom Experience, it sought to blend divine decor with daily necessity. However, its grandiose name clashed with the simplicity most desired in their private chambers. As bathroom trends leaned towards minimalism, church jewels flushed away into obscurity, a testament to the delicate balance between aspiration and practicality in product naming. Carter's old spanky pants dove into the children's wear market in 1964, 
with a name that aimed to blend nostalgia and a pinch of cheekiness. With slogans like Naughty But Nice, it endeavored to capture the hearts of parents with a mix of sentiment and humor. However, its whimsical approach struggled to resonate in a market prioritizing straightforwardness and comfort, leaving old spanky pants as a charming yet outdated relic, a giggle in the fabric of childhood attire history. Wilson's Biff Canned Beef, introduced to American dinner tables with the promise of beef in a flash, relied on its snappy acronym to cut through the canned clutter. Yet, its terse name left much to the imagination, under-delivering on the rich, home-cooked story consumers craved. As culinary tastes evolved, demanding deeper flavor narratives, BIF retreated into the pantry of past, a brief chapter in the cookbook of convenience, reminding us that sometimes, brevity isn't the spice of life. Lick new furniture polish, stepping into the 20s with the promise of antique shine, modern care, sought to make heirlooms sparkle with a name that played on like new. This punny promise aimed to resonate with homemakers dreaming of dust-free days. However, as cleaning products evolved towards sleek branding, Lick New's clever name lost its luster, gently wiped away by the shine of modern marketing, leaving it as a quaint echo of a time when wordplay polished the sales pitch. Scat insect repellent burst onto the scene, arming outdoor enthusiasts against nature's tiny invaders. With a name that commanded both attention and giggles, it promised, bug off with scat a slogan that didn't quite land as intended. Launched when product names could make or break a brand, Scat's bold choice veered too close to playground humor, buzzing off the radar as consumers preferred brands that whispered protection with a bit more subtlety, leaving Scat as a bemused buzz in pest control history. In the 1950s, Unicum French-style hairnets spun elegance into the daily routine, promising Parisian chic in every thread its name, aiming for unparalleled uniqueness, instead wove a web of confusion, tangling sophistication with singularity. As fashion liberated hair from nets to let locks flow freely, Unicum's tight grip on style loosened, fading into the background as a silky memory of times when fashion dictated such refined restraints, a gossamer ghost in the wardrobe of yesteryear. A big job for Mum, cleaning products entered the market with a maternal touch, offering Mum's magic for messes as its cleaning creed. The brand intended to bottle the essence of maternal efficiency, but instead overpromised, painting household chores as Herculean tasks. As cleaning innovations leaned towards ease and simplicity, Mum's ambitious angle swept itself out leaving a sparkle of nostalgia for a time when product names dared to dramatize the daily dust-up, a dustpan of dreams. Weed television station representatives, pioneers in broadcasting, chose a name before weed twined into different cultural vines. With broadcasting growth one channel at a time as their slogan, they didn't anticipate the linguistic shift that would rebrand their innovation into irony. As the media landscape expanded, Weed's pioneering spirit got lost in translation, turning a trailblazer into a token of chuckles, a static-filled memory in the evolution of television, broadcasting a lesson in naming foresight. Macho, Macho Man Cologne doused the disco era with a scent of bold bravado, declaring, be the man of the dance floor. It aimed to bottle the essence of manly allure, but instead spritzed a fine line between confidence and caricature. As the disco lights dimmed and tastes in masculinity evolved, the cologne's loud declaration softened into a whisper of nostalgia, a fragrant footnote in the olfactory anthology of an era that danced a little too close to the flames of flamboyance. Wipe Your Face with Young People Facial Tissues in 1969 presented a name that intended whimsy but brushed against the surreal. With Youth in Every Tissue as their pitch, they hoped to capture the market with novelty. Their seaworthy sunglasses launched with a pun that aimed to marry the sea's allure with visionary clarity, hoping to navigate the sunny seas with style would catch consumer currents. 
However, the tide of trends sought sleek sophistication over maritime mirth, leaving Seaworthy adrift in a sea of more urbane brands, its light dimmed by the shifting sands of fashion, a beacon of creativity lost in the fog of market evolution, a ship that sailed a bit too whimsically. Hidden body perfume aspired to cloak its wearers in an aura of mystery, with Unveil the Unseen Whispering Secrets of Allure. Its enigmatic name sought to navigate the intimate dance of fragrance and mystery, but perhaps cloaked too much, leaving a trail too faint for followers. As fragrance narratives embrace transparency and storytelling, Hidden Body's scent of secrets dissipated into the ether, a ghostly fragrance in the perfume lexicon, a lesson in the delicate art of olfactory intrigue. Force brand cereal powered into breakfast bowls with strength in every spoonful, banking on an era hungry for health and vitality. It promised a morning muster of energy, but found itself spooning against the grain of subtler tastes and nutritional nuance. As breakfast trends evolved towards diversity and dietary awareness, Force's hearty shout became a morning murmur, leaving a crunchy echo in the cereal saga a testament to the changing tastes and tales woven into the fabric of American mornings. The Bone Phone, released in 1979, aimed to revolutionize personal audio with its bone conduction technology, promising an immersive sound experience. Despite its innovative design, the name prompted more laughter than intrigue, overshadowing its unique selling point. This resulted in the bone phone becoming a memorable yet fleeting gimmick in technology history, illustrating the significant role that naming plays in a product's success or failure. Did these product naming fails bring a smile to your face? If so, like this video, click subscribe, and stay tuned for more nostalgia trips.